glyoxylate cycle. In the first step, acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate join together to form citrate. Citrate synthase enzyme catalyzes this reaction. Moving on to the next step. In the second step, citrate converts into cis-aconitate with the help of enzyme aconitase. Remember, this reaction is reversible. Let's move on to the next reaction. In this reaction, cis-aconitate is converted into isocitrate. Aconitase is the enzyme that boosts this conversion. This reaction is also reversible. Let's see what happens ahead. In the next reaction, isocitrate is cleaved into two products, glyoxylate and succinate. The enzyme involved in this reaction is isocitrate lyase. Let's jump to the next reaction. In this reaction, glyoxylate forms malate. Remember acetyl-CoA is added in this reaction. This means glyoxylate joins with acetyl-CoA and forms malate in this reaction. The enzyme in action in this reaction is malate synthase. Moving on to the next reaction. In this last reaction, Malate dehydrogenase enzyme oxidizes malate to oxaloacetate. NADH is formed in this reaction. Where does glyoxylate cycle occur? Let's see the answer. Glyoxylate cycle occurs in some plants and microorganisms. They undergo glyoxylate cycle in a specialized cellular organelle. The name of that special organelle is glyoxysome. Why glyoxylate cycle occurs? Because certain plants and microorganisms use this cycle to form carbohydrates, specifically glucose from fats. They then use these carbs to generate energy, which helps them survive, grow, and build new parts. That is it for today's video. Make sure you are subscribed to the Science Info channel. Like and share this video if you want to help others. Stay tuned. I will see you in the next video.